Hello everybody, welcome to History of Christianity, Reformation to Modern. I want to walk you through the syllabus for the internet section of this class for spring 2023. First, I want to assure you this is not your high school history class. My wife Margie tells me that when she was in high school, her history class was taught by the football coach because he had to, and all they did was memorize names, dates, and places. No, that's not what we're about here at NOBTS. Certainly not what I'm about. Are you a Harry Potter fan? Well, I model myself after Professor Dumbledore, and I want to make uh, this subject come alive. You know, in the Harry Potter stories, the professor of history of magic is Professor Benz, and he bored himself to death and just kept on teaching as a ghost. Well, I may be old, but I'm not a ghost, and so I want you to know that I'm passionate about church history, and I want to share my passion with you. Well, here's my contact information. The best way to reach me is through my email address, and you see it there on screen. I prefer that you email me directly with my office email address rather than emailing me through Canvas, but either approach will work. If you're on campus, I'm in the Dodd Building, first floor, room number 105. To find the Dodd Building, you just follow the sidewalk from Level Chapel all the way to the end, turn right, and there you are at the Dodd Building. My phone number is there. It's new this year, 504-816-8202. Uh, Feel free to call me. But the very best way to reach me is to send me an email, and I'll respond as quickly as I can. If you email me on the weekend, I probably will not respond until the next Monday, unless it is an emergency. But uh, you feel free to write me at any time, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Let's talk about textbooks. Uh, there are two required textbooks. The first one is Justo Gonzalez, The Story of Christianity, Volume 2. The Reformation to the Present Day. Be sure that you get Volume 2. This is the textbook that helped me to fall in love with church history because Justo Gonzalez writes in such a readable style. In fact, that's why he calls his textbook The Story of Christianity because he writes it like a story. Sometimes I feel like the chapters that he writes sound like the plot of a made-for-TV movie. The other textbook is uh, edited by Harry Betton, I'm sorry, Henry Bettinson and Chris Maunder. It's the Documents of the Christian Church. It is a reader, and in this book, you'll have an opportunity to uh, read the primary sources written by the people that you are studying about. And there will be additional required reading from primary sources that are available for free on the internet. The reading schedule is included in your course schedule, which is embedded in your syllabus and then available as a separate document on Canvas. You can order your books from eCampus through nobts.ecampus.com. Now, this year we have a new learning platform. We've migrated from Blackboard to Canvas learning platform. And so you will go to your Canvas account. You will be automatically enrolled when you register for your class. And uh, this uh, program uh, is helpful to students because it can be accessed from your phone and tablet as well as 
from your laptop and desktop. All right, once you get onto Canvas, I hope that you will look for uh, the uh, discussion board where you will post your introduction. Uh, tell me, tell your uh, fellow students a little bit about yourself. Uh, tell where you live, where you're from, uh, your educational background. I would love to hear about the degree program that you're enrolled in and what are your ministry goals? Where are you currently ministering? What is your current job? I'd love to hear about your family. If you're married and have children or if you're single and want to talk about your family of origin. Uh, I like pictures. Please show us a picture of your family or your pet or uh, your vacation. Uh, show a picture of you doing what you like to do. I've already led the way uh, with uh, uh, an opportunity for you to meet your professor. I've probably told you more information that you want to know and posted lots of pictures of uh, me and my wife, uh, our family, and our grandkids. And of course, you want to see pictures of our grandkids, right? Now, Canvas organizes uh, the course in modules. And so when you uh, go to the, uh, I guess the home page, you'll see the modules lined out for you in chronological order. Uh, in each module, you'll find video lectures, you'll find bonus features. In fact, in the first few weeks, I've posted some uh, videos that I recorded during a Reformation 500 tour that I took with my sister back in March of 2017. And so lots of bonus features throughout the semester for you to look for. All right, you also will find your weekly reading reports on under the modules as well as uh, the place where you will post your application points. There will be study guides and unit tests. All of this uh, in your weekly course modules. All right, let's talk about unit tests. Uh, you see the due dates for these tests and um, these of course are in your syllabus. The first unit test is not until February 6th, but after this they they pretty much roll around pretty regularly every two to three weeks. There are six unit tests. You'll take these tests online and each one lasts for 25 minutes. At 25 minutes, when the time expires, your test will shut down. So be sure that you are complete uh, before the 25 minutes uh, runs out. Now, each unit test has a base value of 25 points. But you'll find that every test has some extra questions. And so actually it's worth 26, 27, 29 points or so. Uh, but please do not be concerned. So many times I get emails from students who are concerned about the extra questions, but the more questions there are, the more opportunities you have to add up the points. That's why I call them bonus questions, because bonus comes from the Latin word for good. So please trust me. I'm not a mathematician, but I do know that uh, extra points are good. And so there's a base value of 25 points, but you can earn more points than that on every test. Now, uh, pay attention to this. Uh, you, there are six unit tests this semester, but the lowest test grade will be dropped. And this is to your advantage. This is in case you forget to take a test or if you have computer problems. If you go out of town for a revival or a D now, if you go visit grandma uh, and she's got dial up, probably not. Uh, grandma probably has better internet than you have. But nonetheless, if you go out of town and you cannot take the unit test, uh, don't worry, the lowest test grade will be dropped. And so if you miss one, you can drop that one. 
Uh, if you're satisfied with your first five test scores by the end of the semester, well then you can exempt yourself from the sixth. Now, reading reports uh, will be submitted every week. Every week you will have a reading report. And so you will estimate the percentage of reading that you completed that week in 20% increments. Uh, so 100% uh, is two and a half points. That's the easiest way to compute it. Just read everything and you get the full two and a half points. If you don't read quite all the assignment, well then you can claim 80% uh, and get two points. Just over half, well that's 60%, one and a half points and so forth. Please do your reading. Uh, it's probably possible to pass the course without doing any reading, but I hope you will do your reading because there's more to learn than what I can pack into these video lectures. At the end of the semester, you'll have an opportunity to submit a bonus reading report, and then you'll get five points extra if you complete all the assigned reading. This means that if you cannot complete all of your reading for one week, you can catch up later on. Uh, or if you keep up with it all along the semester, well, that's the easiest way to earn your extra five points. The reading schedule is included in the syllabus. Now, your other unit assignment is the application point. It is my hope, it is my goal that you will be able to apply what you learn in church history to your own personal life and to your ministry. Therefore, I want you to participate in a discussion during each of the six units. You'll consider the lessons that you learned uh, during that period of time and you'll compose an application point. This could be a sermon illustration an application to your ministry, or a lesson learned for your personal life. And remember, some of these lessons might be negative lessons. That is, you might learn what not to do based on what uh, some pope or some reformer uh, did. Uh, so sometimes we learn uh, what not to do from our church history figures. After studying the assigned reading, the lecture material, and the bonus features, open up the discussion question forum and create your own thread. Your thread should be uh, between 150 and 300 words. I want your application point to be substantive. Uh, you may respond to your fellow students and their application points. This is encouraged, but it is not required. Really, I'm just looking for your own personal application point. All right, so uh, again, based on your study of each unit, provide the class with at least one of the following. A sermon illustration or teaching point that you learned from this period of church history. How could you use specific stories or examples from this unit in your preaching and teaching? Uh, you might learn an insight that you plan to apply in your ministry now or in the future? How can events from this unit teach us to serve better? Or there might be an experience from this period that is inspiring you uh, to your personal devotion for Christ. How has studying this unit impacted your personal Christian life? All right, so an application point can be uh, any one of these approaches or more than one if you like. Each application point is worth 15 points. The schedule is as follows, and again, this schedule is uh, in your syllabus for you to follow. Uh, they need to be submitted on time. They need to be substantive. Uh, if they are, then you will earn your 15 points. Otherwise, uh, there will be deductions made along the way. All right, uh, we will not have a research paper for this class, but instead there will be two book reviews. I believe that if you read a book, uh, either a biography or a book about a movement or event, 
then uh, that one book can give you the information that I would want you to gain from a research paper. And so uh, you will need uh, two book reviews. For the book review of a biography, uh, each student will read and review a biography of a subject located within the parameters of the Reformation and modern eras of the church. There are suggested biographies in the selected bibliography of your syllabus. Now other books are allowed, but only with the permission of your professor. And the book review of the biography is due on February the 20th. All right. I just include two uh, samples here, a uh, biography of Martin Luther, or one of Bonhoeffer, but goodness, there are so many other uh, great figures that you can study, uh, John Calvin, C.S. Lewis, and so on. All right, here are the instructions for your book reviews, and these instructions apply to the first and second book reviews. Each book review should be between six to eight double-spaced typewritten pages and should contain, one, a bibliographical entry at the top of the first text page of the review. All right, then there should be a brief biographical sketch of the author. Uh, usually this is available on, on, in the book itself or on Wikipedia. This might be the one time that uh, Wikipedia is a good source. Or you can look up the author at uh, uh, perhaps his uh, uh, current place of work, uh, his university. Uh, anyway, at any rate, you can find uh, biographical sketches of your author. Be sure that you write this in your own words, no copying and pasting, or you'll be docked for plagiarism. All right, the, um, most of your book review is going to be a summary of the contents of the entire book. It's important for me to know that you read the book. I don't want you just to pull uh, biographical information from the internet or from my lecture. I have seen students do this and they have not done well on their book reviews. Read the book. It's there for you to read and to learn from. And then when you have finished uh, uh, summarizing the book, you need to interact with the book with an application point about the impact of this person's life and ministry on your personal life and ministry. So again, another opportunity for you to apply what you are learning to your personal life. All right, the second book review will be a book review about a movement or event, a broader topic than simply a biography. Each student will read and review a book written about a movement or event located with the, within the parameters of the Reformation and modern eras of the church. Again, I've suggested books in the selected bibliography. Other books are allowed, but you need my permission. And here are just a couple of uh, examples. The Anabaptist Story by William Estep and A City Upon a Hill written by Larry Witham. This is a book about uh, how preaching changed American history. The second book review is due on April 10th. All right, now that I've reviewed the two written assignments for the class, it's time for me to put on my ugly face. All right, we need to talk about uh, the expectations and requirements for this class, all right, because I do have high standards that I have set and expect you to meet. All right, let's talk about some penalties. Uh, unit tests and reading reports must be submitted by the deadline. After the deadline, unit tests and reading reports will not be reopened. So do not ask me to do that. I will not reopen the test or reading report after the deadline has passed. You need to take the syllabus and mark those due dates on your calendar and be sure that you know when your assignments are due. 
and complete them. Now remember, one unit test grade will be dropped. So if for some reason you're unable to take the unit test, you can drop one of those and not be concerned about it. There'll be no penalty uh, for one test grade that is dropped, all right? Uh, in the application points, uh, you need to participate adequately. You need to do so in a timely manner. Otherwise, that will affect the amount of points awarded. Tardiness. Possibly, I am the strictest professor that you have uh, related to uh, getting your written assignments turned in on time. Let me explain. When I was a master's student and even a PhD student, I will tell you that I was the worst procrastinator in the class. Oh my. Uh, I would wait and wait and wait to start writing. I'd do more reading and do more outlining and more planning and preparation. Then all of a sudden, as the due date approached, the log jam broke and uh, I began writing. Well, often it was a little bit late. And so I had to stay up all night long in order to punch print at 6 a.m. for an 8 a.m. class. I did that far too often. But I made sure that my written assignments were turned in on time. And I expect that out of you. Now, when, <laughs> when I was in school, uh, not only did I have to walk through the snow uphill both ways, but my professors would not allow late work. I will accept work late, but I will penalize late work. If it is late uh, at all, it'll be assessed a 10% penalty. Uh, and then if it's later than five days, that's a 20% penalty. After one week, the penalty is so severe, I don't even post it because it's fearful and no assignment will be accepted after two weeks past the deadline. All right, so again, uh, I am very strict about punctuality with your written work. Please get it in on time. And no plagiarism, okay? Uh, this, is, uh, this is my advice on plagiarism. Don't do it. A high standard of personal integrity is expected of all students at New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary. Any infraction will be reported to the Dean of Students for further action. You can see the graduate catalog for more information on the definition of plagiarism and the consequences for violations of plagiarism. All right, so again, plagiarism is a serious issue. It can bring about a serious penalty. All right, now I can put my happy face back on and we can talk more about uh, the, the class and what you can expect this semester. Now, here are the possible points and the grading scale. Uh, each assignment, you will accumulate uh, points that will add up towards your final grade. Your reading assignments add up to uh, actually to 35 points with the possibility of a five point bonus, but the baseline is 30 points. This means that you can get lots of bonus points for doing all of your reading. Same thing with the tests. Five tests will be counted. Each one has a base value of 25 points, but again, with extra questions, you can earn extra points but the baseline for the semester is 125 points. Each book review is worth 60 points, and then the discussions, that is to say the application points, uh, those six uh, application points worth 15 points each, value 90 points. All right, so you can accumulate uh, 365 points or even more, but uh, based on how many points you accumulate, you will be graded. So 340 points or more equals an A. Uh, 310 points to 339 is a B. 280 points to 309, that's a C, and so forth. If you earn 219 points or less, you will fail this class. 
Let me make a prediction. Half of my students, at least half of my students are going to make A's in this class. Out of the remaining group, most of them are going to make B's. There'll be a few C's and a few D's, but if you want to fail my class, you have to work at it really hard. It means you don't turn in your assignments, uh, you turn them in late, uh, you, uh, you plagiarize. Uh, these are serious issues that uh, could cause you to fail the class, but if you do the work, if you do it consistently and with excellence, you will pass my class probably with an A or a B, all right? Uh, so please uh, pay attention to your due dates and fulfill the expectations. None of them are beyond your capabilities, but I hope that all of them together will help you to learn the history of Christianity in the Reformation and modern eras. All right, here's an emergency plan. Oh, I hate to use, uh, I hate to think about emergencies, but uh, when they happen, go to the seminary website for information related to the seminary, and then check Canvas for instructions related particularly to this class. All right, well, here I am with uh, my Reformation buddies, and we look forward to uh, talking to you about the Reformation and the modern eras of the church. So uh, I hope that you are looking forward to it as well. Let's have a good semester uh, working together. Let's make it happen, all right? God bless you. Look forward to working with you uh, through this class. Amen.